All right, this is the daily review for May 30th, 2024. And today, in terms of my own personal trading, um, on yesterday where I had a down day, a negative day, today we were positive. So if I go look at the account right now on the 150K challenge, we are now at 5,400. So basically back at my equity high. And then on the 50K account, I am at 1,000. So a hundred dollars under the equity high in this so i basically got all of my drawdown back in both accounts now and we are good to go so i'm going to save the trades that i took today for last so i took those in stock into see so we'll do that asset class last so we'll start with crude oil today and i have a lot on the chart right now so let me delete this all right so Looking at crude oil, I was talking about how the bias for me was bullish to get back to equilibrium. However, we ended up having a pretty strong down day. We closed through this balanced price range. So ideally, if we were going to be bullish, I would have liked to see that be used as support to send price higher. But yes, the day is not over yet. It's 3.48 p.m., but it's highly unlikely that we are going to get back to um, this level before the day closes so with that being said is my bias completely shifted no it's not i'm just a little more hesitant on being bullish so i will only be a scalper right now in the crude oil because even if it's going and look es is moving even if it's going to go lower and take out these lows and get into this imbalance this will be the sell side target um relative to the range that we're still in so from this high to this low we are in a discount so i would only want to be a scalper in this market if i was shorting and then obviously on the daily chart because that daily balance price range didn't support price if there are any long opportunities i will also be scalping as well um tomorrow's the last day of the week it is friday tomorrow so that is it for a higher time frame perspective on crude oil. Let's look at the four hour chart, see if there's anything there. So actually let's go back to the daily chart. So we have this down close candle right here. So we have like rejection block there. So that would be a daily rejection block. And then we have these consecutive up close candles right here. And now if you remember yesterday, I was talking about this new theory that I had from the negative day, what I learned was basically an order block. The bodies have to make up at least 50% of the candles range. So usually to find like last point in the sand, the um, price has to support for me to fully change my bias would be mean threshold of the last down close candle. However, mean threshold, the bodies of this candle do, do not make up 50% of the range. So I'm a little hesitant as using this as mean threshold because I wouldn't even classify this down close candle as a order block on its own. So now with that new theory, maybe, and this is just me learning on the fly, honestly. So maybe you have to use mean threshold of this candle. This is the last beefy candle. So we can see that we're wicking at it right now. So if we are to close through that, then we're probably bearish and then we're going to go for lower prices. So then if we go to the four hour chart, we have this imbalance right here, but it's below that mean threshold level. So that's not something I would honestly want to look at. So we'll see where we're at at the New York Open tomorrow. If we're down here, then I'm probably going to be looking for scalps to go short. But if we are up here, then maybe there can be some scalps going long. But no matter what, I'm going to be scalping tomorrow. I'm not going to be trying to day trade or position myself going into next week. And then let's look at the price action for today. So let's go to a five minute chart. So as always, let's put this one on. The day started here. We have Asian range, London open, New York open and London close. We kind of just consolidated and then we had a very nice run during New York open, deep retracement ahead of London close. And then we continue to trade lower going into London close. So what? levels pop out to me well we are range bound and keep hitting the top end of that 30 um percent discount level notice how that is offering resistance for price then we trade lower if we measure this range right here 
from high to low and then use the market maker preset we trade right up into that deep discount that 20 to 30 percent level and then we rally lower we have imbalances that line up with it so there's two things that i was looking at during crude oil i didn't take any trades because the omni model didn't present itself for me however what was i looking at so as price started to rally higher i dropped down to a one minute chart which i will in a minute looking for a reclaimed order block or breaker or a mitigation block that would send price to at least equilibrium and most likely this deep discount up here so if we go to the one minute chart there aren't any reclaimed order blocks breakers or even mitigation block within this range the reason why i say that because this swing high i wouldn't classify it as an intermediate term high because the bodies do close through the fair value gap right here so i wouldn't use that as an intermediate term high and then it doesn't close above these down close candles so it's not a reclaimed order block and then it also doesn't take out any buy side liquidity so it's also not a breaker even though price does support it pretty nicely i'm back down to it boom fair value gap rallies higher right but for the model that i teach that's not how i trade you're gonna miss moves like you don't you don't model in the book so there's gonna be times where the market moves without you and it's going to follow another script that isn't your model and that's okay that's where the discipline comes in and you just let it run without you and you wait for your model to form so then after we had this run right here up to the deep discount level i was measuring from this low to this high and then i'm just going to use this preset so 20 to 30 percent of that range and then we didn't have any um we didn't have claimed order blocks on the one minute chart so like this high wasn't claimed order block this swing high yes we go down but we don't close below the open so this isn't a reclaimed order block these are equal high so that wasn't a clear reclaimed order block on the one minute chart and then there's no up close candles for this swing high either so neither of those were reclaimed order blocks in my book um the only one that i guess you could have used on a one minute chart would have been this right here and you see how the bodies do respect it right there and i'm going through this part for the first time but if we measure that mean threshold is outside the open so the open of this candle or the close of this candle is 78.96 mean threshold is 78.97 and then for this candle mean threshold is 96 and the close is 95 so i wouldn't even use these up close candles as well on the one minute chart so what i did was go to a two minute chart and then now these up close candles right here can be better seen as the reclaimed order block so now when price closes through it comes back to it yes we go down here but we don't close below this for that change in the state of delivery we rally up one more time taking out these swing highs then we close below these up close candles making that a bearish order block and then on a 30 second chart, after we close below that, we have a nice optimal trade entry from this high down to this low right here. Change it to optimal trade entry preset. And then there you go. That swing high goes into optimal trade entry. And then let's say your entry would have been right here. Why am I picking right here? Because we have this balance price range. Let's just change that to gray. We have this balance price range right there within this volume imbalance. So I would enter right there, not at optimal trade entry. So then there you go. Uh, the stop loss will be right there at the swing high. First target always is a two to one R. So that could have been your first potential target right there. And then it's also obviously in a discount because this is equilibrium of the entire range that we're working within this orange line. So this target would have been in a discount. You could have targeted these lows right here, right there, that swing low. That could have been another target if you want to as well. However, the reason why I personally wouldn't have taken this trade, even though everything looks like it's panning out, is if we go to a five-minute chart. So I'm going to delete some of these boxes. If we go to a five-minute chart, we can see right at equilibrium right here, there's a volume imbalance right here and then we have this gap right here so this would be and i'm just gonna draw it out like that so boom that little gap in price right there 
the high end of this volume imbalance and the high end of this inversion fair value gap would be a balanced price range. So when we go back to that 30 second chart prior to this optimal trade entry, we just hit that balanced price range. So according to my model, the rules that I follow, if we're coming off of a, in this case, if I'm selling and we're coming off of a discount balanced price range, then I don't want to enter in that trade because more times than not, I've seen that it doesn't respect this optimal trade entry and it rallies higher. So I personally wouldn't have taken that trade, even though we can look at it in hindsight and see that it was a profitable, still wouldn't take that trade. And then we rally down here into a deep pre deep discount. Realize this whole time I've been saying deep discount up here. So this is a deep premium. And then obviously this is a deep discount. So we rally down into a deep discount. We shoot up higher. All of this mumbo jumbo is happening during a news event. So we had the crude oil inventories and natural gas inventories on the same day. Typically we have crude oil on Wednesday and natural gas on Thursday. However, due to the holiday on Monday this week, both of them were on um, Thursday. So all of this is due to that. We rally back up into the deep premium. So now if we just take our fib from here to here, Go to a one minute chart. We have a boom right there. We have a reclaimed order block right there within the 20 to 30% range. We close out of it right here, rally up higher, close down. So now we have a bullish order block right there or bearish order block. Close through it, rally back up, go lower. However, once again, for my model, my own personal model, the one that I teach in the Omni model course, um, we want to be in within an imbalance. So if we go to the 30 second chart, you can see this rally back up. There aren't any clear imbalances there. Also with this initial rally up here, there aren't any clear imbalances that it's trading into. And then if we go to a 15 second chart, we can see also no clear imbalances that it's trading up into. So personally, I wouldn't have taken, um, that trade. Yes, we do have this little gap right here. So this candle closes here and then the very next candle opens right there. So we have that gap. Notice how price doesn't close through it. It does open through it, but doesn't close through it. And then we rally back up, touch that gap one more time. So that's the gap that it's working off of. However, I don't like to use gaps like that for my model once again. And then lastly, this is also something that I haven't put in the initial Omni model course. It might be in the next course. Also, that would be free too. But we have a Reaper fair value gap. So if we go to a one minute chart. ICT made up this name. It's basically just a reclaimed fair value gap. So the gap that's made within this order block, right? Right here. So we make this gap going lower. If we draw our fib on that gap all the way down. It goes all the way down to here, but I'm just going to use this gap right here. We can see, and let's make it black so we can see it better. We can see price respecting it right there, the high end of that. So that's just a reclaimed fair value gap because, or reclaimed imbalance. So we hit it here, then we close through it, come back to it, close through it one more time, boom, boom, right there. That is the claimed fair value gap being used. Not something that I have taught yet in the Omni model course, but that is that for crude oil. I told you guys what needs to happen if we're going to be bullish or bearish. We can see making lows of the day around that daily mean threshold level. That's what this green line is. Now we're going to move over to the dollar index. And so what did the dollar do today? So we are bullish on the dollar. Yes, we did not have a bullish day, but we are bullish on the dollar. And once again, remember, we're just following that higher time frame market maker model so we had a reclaimed order block here hits it once hits it twice rallies higher breaker with these up close candles and we've rallied off of that breaker since then we've came down we've fully rebalanced this entire gap right here and then after doing that we come back a little bit higher rally down we've created this swing low and then yesterday we had this day, which was promising for a bullish bias. However, until we close above, so let's, where's mean threshold at level? 
or a consequent encroachment, whatever you want to call it, until we close above this green line right here. So right there, this would be a bullish order block. And then hopefully, and I'm saying hopefully because currencies tend to move weird and they've been moving weird for quite some time now. But hopefully if we close through that, then we'll have some speed going into the heart of the summer, taking out these relative equal high highs and eventually getting up into this imbalance right here. But as you can see, we've been range bound for quite some time, so it can stay range bound and not want to push for that high. But that is what I'll be looking for on a longer term basis in the dollar. Let's go look at some current price action. Actually, let's look at the four hour chart. So on the four hour chart, we've closed through this gap. That's not ideal for being bullish. It's more ideal for being in a consolidation for much longer. So we'll see what we do. Just like in every other asset class, I'm only a scalper right now. I'm not trying to day trade or swing trade anything or weekly trade. We also have um, NFP coming up this week. And the more and more that you start to trade, you'll realize that the market tends to be a little less clear as we approach NFP week. NFP week tends to set the direction, the stage, the sentiment for that month. So every time that we get to a new month and we get to that first week or whenever NFP is, it tends to be a little bit muddy, a little less clear. And you really just want to be a scalper until NFP hits the market. And then that kind of sets the rest of the month. So for our chart, now let's go look at what happened intraday. Let's delete this breaker. Oh, I don't remember what this gray box was. Wow. Isn't that crazy? This gray box is from a gap a new gap on Tuesday, 228. And then just look at the precision and how this algorithm remembers this level. So if we go back up, we hit that gap right here. This is literally like a whole year. So this is from 2023, I think. Yeah, that's from February of 2023. And then in February of 2024, we hit that level again. We close through it, come back to it again in April of this year. And then we kind of don't use it again. But then look today, we close through it and balance, use it again. That's actually kind of crazy. I'm not even sure why this was on my chart, but that's actually kind of crazy. But let's go back to the price action for today. So what would I look at? So I would always measure from the previous day low all the way to the previous day high. Look at the market maker preset and look at that during London open. And what do we have here? We have a breaker because we take out sell side, rally up higher, take out buy side, and then we eventually take it out there. We also have other little breakers in between. So like we have this breaker, breaker that's within that overall bigger breaker. But boom, we have the breaker. We close outside of it a little bit, but if you were using that breaker for a model, for a, a trade, do do do, use a trade entry preset. And you have equal equilibrium right here and you have optimal trade entry right outside the breaker, but your stop loss should be above here and you would have been good on that trade right there. Within 20 to 30%, this is a bread and butter setup trying to target to equilibrium. Like when this happens and we haven't even hit equilibrium yet, this is a bread and butter setup right there. Boom. Very easy. Get in during London. You would have got in around 4, 10 a.m. and you're out by 725 so three hours and you're out if you were just targeting equilibrium and then obviously it comes down to that deep discount and through it doesn't go for the low but it comes down to a deep discount i'm interested to see if euro took out its wednesday london high so let's look at that oh you can see some of the trades i took in nasdaq or in the s p um, let's go over euro usd so yeah euro didn't even close to its wednesday high so no SMT there. Let's look at British pound. British pound also didn't come close to its Wednesday high. So there is a chance that we can go and attack this low going into tomorrow due to the lack of SMT. We'll need the Omni model to form going bearish, but there is a chance that that could happen. We could rally up back to equilibrium, big imbalance, rebalance that and see what happens. This isn't a trade idea. You would need to see where we're at during whatever session you're trying to trade. So going back to that. So that was the clear, the clearest trade right now looking at it. So then we take out Asia. So boom, 
We take out Asia right there. Smart money reversal. We have low risk sell. Your low risk sell is going to be at either the order block or a breaker or mitigation block. That is not within 20 or 30%. So it's going to be above it. So we have this breaker right here. So I'm going to delete that. So we have this breaker. That's your low risk sell. Then we have this breaker. That's your first stage. And then we have the order block from the first stage right here. We have this order block. That is your second stage happening in the pre New York open. So at 6 15 AM. And that is your market maker model right there for the dollar index. Look, smart money reversal, low risk sell. And the reason why he calls it low risk is in terms of the amount of pips, it's less pips. However, it's technically higher risk because the chances of it panning out are a little bit lower because you're entering so much in a discount and could always run one more higher high. But for the simplicity sake and trying to keep the lingo the same, if you're coming from ICT's camp, this is your low risk sell first stage inside the red box is your first stage. And then the order block from that boom hits it there for second stage. And then we go lower attacking equilibrium and then attacking the deep discount level 20 to 30%. And then we fail to get all the way down to the low. And then in terms of targeting, there are many ways you can target. So first thing I would do is always use the breakers. So I would use the first stage breaker. I wouldn't necessarily use this breaker, the low risk. I would use the first stage breaker, the standard deviations of that from the bodies and the wicks. And then let's make the bodies red. And then I would use this optimal trade entry. So this retracement, I would use that as well. Boom. So I would use that. And then I would just look for key levels that align with the standard deviation. So looking off rip or right away, whatever you using a little sling there, we have standard deviation right there. So that could be a target. Boom. What would the risk to reward ratio? We always have to make sure it's at least two to one. So if we go to optimal trade entry, if our entry was right at equilibrium with a stop loss right there, and if our target was here, that would clearly be a two to one. That would be a three to one risk to reward ratio. So boom, next target would be in that deep discount. So we have imbalances right there. First standard deviation right there. That would give you a five R. And then the last one would be just below this low. So right there. And then that would give you a eight R trade. So ideally take off majority of your position here take off a little bit more here and leave like one lot for the target so basically for the final target this is more like an eagle stroke you're not really trying to bank in more profit if it goes back up and stops you out or hits this target doesn't really change that much in your pnl you've banked in majority ideally at least 90 percent of your trade with these two targets right here just trying to see if you can be right on this low right here so this is what we'll check for tomorrow when we have the market review for dollar but that is it for currencies and now let's go over to bonds so going to the daily chart so i was saying that this is a bearish tar target for bonds right now because we did close through this imbalance we rallied up to it though so one thing that i'm looking at is this breaker right here I want to see if price wants to go to that breaker. So use the breaker, come back down, and then use this as an inversion fair value gap type thing. So we can trade through it right now. Trade up into this imbalance. We have this breaker right here. We can also measure consequent encroachment of the wick. So that's another significant level, which lines up basically with the bottom end of the breaker. And then see if price wants to reject it, go lower going into this target level right here so that is what i'm looking at for bonds not really trying to be bullish right now and let's just go so also we're hitting this order block right now so that is what we've just hit and then we had this small volume imbalance right here we have the small volume imbalance right there so that is what we hit today so i'm just going to delete that 
go down to a intraday chart. So yes, we closed through it. But if you notice, oh, let's go to futures and then let's make that gray. Yes, we closed through it here. But if you notice at 12 a.m., we're above the volume imbalance. So that is very important. You want to know what the 12 a.m. opening price is. And we're still below this uh, inversion fair value gap. Now it's officially an inversion fair value gap because we've closed below it based off the 12 a.m. opening price. And then you can see we come up, we tag this low right here. This is all that's needed in bonds. It just needs to make an equal low for it to be tagged. And then we rally higher happening at 820. We have 830 news. So as soon as 830 hits, boom, don't want to position yourself ahead of the GDP news. That's what we had today. So boom, rallies up, comes back down to the bottom end of that inversion fair value gap, and then just rallies up higher. There weren't any um, Omni model trades because just took off at 830 and then just continue. But notice where the close, the higher the day is happening at. So like I said, bonds tends to have a lot less manipulation. Notice how we stop right here, leave this gap open, and then we make the high of the day right there. So that's pretty pretty much it for bonds. And then now we can go to stock indices and go over the trade that I took. So I have a lot on the chart right now. So let's go to a daily chart. Let's take the executions off real quick. Let's look at where we're at on a longer time horizon. All right, so I was talking about how on Tuesday, I was talking about how I was still favoring bullishness. Um, but I wanted to get closed through this green line, which was mean threshold of this order block. If we close through that, then I was expecting this high to be taken, but we can see we reject it perfectly and we can see what has happened since. So we've been working within this range from low to high 20 to 30%. We have this right here, reclaimed order block within 20 to 30%. So this is now indicating to me that this is now the draw on liquidity that low right there getting into all of these imbalances and possibly as deep as this discount right here I'm not saying we're gonna completely reverse take out all these lows even though it is possible i'm only looking right now for just this low and potentially this area right here so we can get a retracement we're clearly going to make a fair value gap it's going to be a balanced price range inside reclaimed order block a whole lot of stuff in our favor price rallies up into here we short that and go lower that is what i'm looking for um before i fully fully come that let's make sure nasdaq is on the same page so yep there we go let's just close or delete majority of these tools so in terms of nasdaq measuring let's just the last 20 days so measuring from low to high, 20 to 30% is right there. So in terms of reclaimed order blocks, the only reclaimed order block we have is right here. But if we go to a four hour chart or let's see 12 hour chart, maybe it shows it. So a 12 hour chart's not gonna show it. Let's see if a nine hour chart would show one. We're just looking for a reclaimed order block or a breaker within that range right there. That's not going to show it. And then on a four hour chart, and this would be your breaker right here on a four hour chart. So we close through the breaker, rally up. Yes, we wick up into the gap, but notice how the bodies don't close below it and we start to go lower. So NASDAQ is also on board with lower prices. And then going to the daily chart, we have imbalances all the way down here, but NASDAQ is a stronger one. So if we are going to be short, most likely want to be an ES. It's also a little bit more clean. So with all that in mind, that's what I was looking at this morning. Um, so I would drop onto a four hour chart. And what I was looking at was we, we trade lower or actually let's do this first. Let's go to a 12 hour chart. So this is that bigger daily one. I'm going to delete the daily one. And I was looking at this 12 hour uh, reclaimed order block breaker here. So we had this 12 hour one and prior to today, we opened right here. So this is 6 a.m. Thursday. We open right here. And what I was looking at was on a four hour chart. So on the four hour chart, if we adjust this reclaimed order block breaker, it's now going to be this one right here. 
So we have that reclaimed order block right there. And then mean threshold of the highest candle is going to be that green line there. So then on the four hour chart, we had this swing high that was above mean threshold. And there's no like really clear imbalances yet. You can run out the high and fill this one in. And this is outside of that reclaimed order block. So what I was looking at was from high to low, this optimal trade entry. And then we clearly have equilibrium right here and we can see the reaction that we have. But to, or now let's get into the actual short that I took. So now going down to a five minute chart, that equilibrium level, I'm just going to map it out here. So based off that four hour optimal trade entry, equilibrium was right there. And then let's just label it real quick. Four hour equilibrium. So that was the equilibrium level there. So now settings, executions. I ended up selling short here. Yes, we haven't hit equilibrium. This is why it was only a scalp. I ended up short shorting here and then just bought here, expecting a retracement back into this fair value gap and then going up to equilibrium. And then obviously we had to sell off after, but after I caught this trade, I was done for the day. I had some things I had to do and I missed the rest of the day, but I'm going to go over some trades that you could have taken um, during this day as, or during this part of the day as well. So we have the equilibrium level. So what I'm looking at is we have this mitigation block right here on the five minute chart. And we also have this um, breaker as well. So we have a breaker here on top of that mitigation block. The reason why I didn't really care for the breaker as much as the mitigation block is the mitigation is higher. So it was an easier target to get to low hanging fruit while the breaker. Yes, it does get to it. Obviously it has to get to the mean to the mitigation block before it gets to the breaker. So I was using the mitigation block as my target. So we have this five minute mitigation block. And then in ES, we have divergence right here with this swing high and this swing high. We have divergence right there. And then if we go to the NASDAQ, that same. So first let's do this. So there we go. And NASDAQ, it's making a higher high right here. So it will be easier if I go out to two charts. So boom, in ES, it's making a lower high while in the NASDAQ, it's making a higher high. So then after that, I drop down to a 30 second chart. We have shifts in market structure right here in NASDAQ. So market structure shift there. And then in the ES, we also have a market structure shift here. So we have both having market structure shifts. And then on top of that, we go to the five minute chart again. We have a change in the state of delivery when we close below this down close candle. So then we just want to find mean threshold of that candle. Boom, mean threshold right there on the green line. And then lastly, if our target's going to be here, so there's multiple targets you could have had you could stage right there, dropping down to a one minute chart and then dropping back down to a 30 second chart. So right now, based off of the 30 second chart, you would have to draw your fib. So let's make this one big. You would have to draw your fib from all the way up here because this is where the SMT, there's no other swing highs down to here. Optimal trade entry, boom. You have equilibrium right here but you can see that we don't have any clear balanced price ranges here on a 30 second chart. However, if we drop down to the 15 second chart, first you can use this high right here because this is above mean threshold and you can put your low here. And then now also we have a clear balanced price range right here. So I can make that gray, make it easier to see. So we have our balanced price range inside optimal trade entry now. So I entered right here on that candle right at the high. Yes, I got slipped a little bit. I wanted to get in uh, ideally at 69.75, but nonetheless, I get in right at the high and then I get out pretty much prior to this retracement right here. So now two to one would have been right. Oh no, let's move the stop loss right there. Two to one would have been right here. That would have been two to one R and my bad entry should have been right there because we closed through this one time so we can enter right here. This is your another balance price range. So entry is right there. Two to one would be here and then your standard deviations right there. 
and then also from the body's first standard deviations right here. So that's why, so this would have been my target. And then that's why I got out at 66.50, one tick above the target right there. So yes, it's not a lot in terms of points. It's only three, three handles, but that is all you need because in reality, the risk to reward ratio is a two to one. And because in futures, you can be very precise. Everyone gets the same uh, price, no matter what. There aren't different brokers with different prices, the same no matter where. And then the spread is always going to be fixed. So the spread is always one tick in the S&P. And then in NASDAQ, it's always two ticks. So that is why you're able to ultra scalp like this. And then, like I said, we just targeted the mitigation block right there. And then you can see the retracement would have came back to entry. Don't want to be a part of that. Yes, it goes a little bit lower. That's pretty much the low of this move right here. So happy with the executions here. Um, really nothing to nitpick now. Oh, wow. Didn't want to do that. So now what other trades could you have taken? So one trade that could have been taken was on this low. So remember how equilibrium is at 74.5. The high on this is 74.25. So we are one tick away from equilibrium. Notice how we do not hit it here. So what can you expect? That price is not done going higher. We still have a target to hit. We got to get into this imbalance right here. And at the time, maybe up here into these. But ideally, price is going to hit equilibrium. So when we drop down here, we have another. So I can delete the executions. Take that off. Take that away. Just to make the chart more clear. We already have a lot on the chart. So notice how the bodies don't close through. But on NASDAQ, the bodies clearly close through. So let's put it in two side by side. Bodies don't close through. NASDAQ bodies clearly do close through. So there goes divergence there. Then we can measure from up here, or we can measure from up here to down here. Look for market maker model right there. Drop down to a one minute chart. On the one minute chart, we take out these highs, drop down to take out these lows. So we have a breaker right here. And then we're just going to extend the breaker to mean threshold of this candle. So the breaker goes to or consequent encroachment of the candle right there. So that is your one minute breaker. It's within 20 to 30 percent of the range at this time up here. We've also have had shifts in market structure by taking out this high in NASDAQ as well. So NASDAQ is showing signs of bullishness after the divergence. And then now we're just going to put our focus to the S&P and then all of this is clearly seen on a one minute chart. You can measure from this low to this high. Why am I not picking this low? Because the bodies do not close below this low. So we can use this low. Use the optimal trade entry preset. We have equilibrium right here. We have optimal trade entry down here. If we drop down to a 30 second chart, let's see if we had any balanced price ranges at equilibrium. So nothing clearly seen on a 30 second chart. Let's see on a 15 second chart and boom, there you have it on the 15 second chart. We have a clear balanced price range right here and you can see it hits it perfectly and goes higher. So this would have been a, another perfect entry because your entry would have had to be right at the balanced price range. Boom. Perfect entry. Stop loss down here. First target two to one. Now, obviously you would want to use your standard deviations, find the very exact target, but ignore this. This is not the target that was from the other trade, but you can clearly see that we hit our target. You can also target the deep premium level up here. So that is two trades in the S and P that were nice today with the Omni model. There was a trade in Forex and the dollar that was also nice with the Omni model as well. So the Omni model was as it does pretty much every day doing very well. And I say pretty much because no model is perfect. There are days and it's very few if executed properly. Now you're going to mess up because even I still mess up um, sometimes executing the model. If you just follow the model's rules step by step and be religious about following it, it works pretty much every day. And by it works, I mean it will land a profitable day, more win winning trades than not. 
across the asset classes that we talk about. And then for the PM session, we sell off pretty aggressively. There wasn't anything but the Omni model itself, but we did sell off pretty aggressively. So we've covered the four asset classes. Um, now I'm just going to attach the recording of this S&P trade. So for you people out there that think that I just make this stuff up and don't actually take trades myself to prove you guys wrong, I'm going to attach that at the end. So I hope you guys found this video insightful. I hope you find the execution video insightful as well. And I will see you guys tomorrow, Friday, for our review.